It is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, white nationalist elected in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, they're acting like, oh my goodness, I had no idea. Some people did not. I think others did. Here it is. It's an unusual meetup on a Monday night in Enid, Oklahoma. The location is secret. Somebody minds the door for security. A small group determined to change their city. Everybody in this room played a role. Among those here are 69-year-old Connie Vickers. I was born and raised here in Enid. And 74-year-old Nancy Presnell. I've lived here most of my life. They're best friends and Democrats, rare in the deeply conservative county. Both retired, but hard at work. How many doors did you knock on? I don't know. Yeah, it was a lot. Enough to get the signatures needed for a recall election of city commissioner Judd Blevins. This is Judd Blevins in 2017, tiki torch in hand in Charlottesville, Virginia, marching alongside avowed white supremacists and neo-Nazis. I saw the picture of Judd Blevins with the tiki torch. Now, there were warnings before it became a national story. Local reporter found out, made hay. No one paid attention. There's more. And I was like, just shocked. The more they looked, the more they found. Blevins had been an active leader in the white nationalist group Identity Europa. According to an analysis of photos, biographical details, and other information, Blevins hid his white nationalist identity behind the online moniker Conway. In private online forums reviewed by NBC News, Blevins, as Conway, posted racist messages and praised Hitler. And yet, when the former Marine ran for city commissioner last year as a conservative Republican... He won by 36 votes. Now, Presnell and Vickers are part of the Enid Social Justice Committee, vocal opponents of Blevins since he took office. The group mincing no words on its website, saying Enid has a Nazi problem. A lot of people don't want to say the word Nazi, but when you see what he did and what he's involved with, you know, it's not name calling. It's what he is and what he believes. Now, I want to provide some context before I go to the next video. The Republicans who are saying we do not identify with being a neo-Nazi, we do not subscribe to white nationalism, they are being called, well, they are being called fascist, they are being called Antifa, uh, they are being called liberals even. Here it is. We wanted to ask Blevins what he believes for ourselves, but he denied our multiple requests for interviews. We tried once more outside a city council meeting. Can I ask, you were a leader in an Oklahoma chapter of a white nationalist organization, and I want to know if you have any explanation to that. Come here, come here, come here. Why did you march and unite the right? Why did you hold a tiki torch and march as people did, said hey, Jews will not did replace us? Or I've been a conservative all my life. Cindy Allen was editor and publisher of the Enid News and Eagle when Blevins won. Her paper had published a front page story about his past prior to the election. Blevins called it a hit piece. We followed up uh, many times and he never would answer us. And yet he won. He won. There's an opportunity now to address what kind of tolerance of extremism this community is going to have. Let's, let's get this right. When it was a local story, he still gets elected. No big, no big fanfare about his neo-Nazi ties. When it becomes a national story picked up by NBC News, there's a significant roar to say this is not us. There's more. Enid's mayor, David Mason, also a conservative Republican, says behind closed doors, Blevins admitted to his involvement in white nationalist activities. And my follow-up question was, are you still involved with those groups? And he told me, I do not have to answer that question. And my, my thought was, you just did. Blevins' opponent in the recall election, set for April 2nd, is a Republican too. She didn't want to talk about the race with us, a race that most here see as squarely about Blevins. If we vote him in a second time, it probably says a lot about, about who we are. That identity is exactly what Vickers and Presnell are working for. National white supremacist organizations have called you two outrageous Antifa commandos. 
<laughs> Badge of honor. What happens if you don't win? We keep putting up a fight. <laughs> we're, we're not going to put up with it quietly. I must give credit where credit is due. These Republican women, primarily, by the way, these Republican women are actually leading. This is called leadership. See, leadership is not always about who you motivate. Sometimes it is about who you are willing to offend when necessary. It is necessary to offend racist. It is necessary to offend neo-Nazis. It is necessary to offend white nationalist. But women, Republican women are leading the charge in that city against an openly and well known white nationalist figure. All right, let's get into it. Another day, another Republican elected official turns out to have white nationalist ties. And once again, we're forced to ask a largely rhetorical question. What is it about GOP politics that consistently brings all the neo-Nazis to the yard? This was by Zach Lindley in News One. Last year, Blevins ran a successful campaign <clears throat> to become one of six city commissioners in Ward One, small city, Enid, Oklahoma. But before that, Blevins was an active leader, one of the largest white nationalists and neo-Nazi groups of the alt-right, Identity Europa. And he was one of the hundreds of ticky torch wielding white supremacists who participated. 2017, we all remember that. It was a deadly Unite the Right rally that happened in Virginia, Charlottesville. After two citizens found a photo of, a, of Blevins at a rally, torch in hand, um, everything was open and all of his white supremacist skeletons came staggering out of the closet. Connie Vickers had found the photo online, along with others showing Commissioner Blevins marching alongside an angry mob. A crowd of men recorded throughout the night, spitting and shouting, quote, Jews will not replace us, end quote. Vickers had it enlarged at a local print and copy shop. On a January night of 2023, she and Nancy Presnall, best friends, retirees, and rare Democrats in a deeply rare Oklahoma County, brought it to a sparsely attended forum where Blevins, a candidate running at that time, was making his case. Blevins, a white veteran who ran on a conservative Christian values ticket, and all he really had to contend with was an article in the local paper about his white nationalist connections, which he dismissed as, quote, hit piece, end quote. And locals like Vickers and Presnall, who were dismissed as loony Antifa activists. People familiar with the article online will provide the proof. Here it is. Jared Holt, Judd Blevins. Who this story is about, spent years claiming my reporting, which at the time corroborated and added more info to claims that he was a state leader in identity Europa, was fake, a lie, a smear, etc. NBC learned that in private, he has admitted it was accurate. Another post, Judd Blevins acknowledged, this is from Anna Amelia, Judd Blevins acknowledged his, his participation in white supremacist groups, but has refused to disclose his current involvement. You saw the mayor talk about that on open record. Now, let's be very clear. His affiliation is problematic, of course. It is an organizational connection. But see, the organizational connection speaks to a, dip, a deeper issue inside of politics, and it is of course, the ideology of the politician. So here's the challenge for those who live in this city. You all have to do some soul searching as well. Because a man who holds the conviction of racist ran on policies that you liked and that you voted for, that you agreed with. He is, in fact, a white supremacist. 
you will say you are not. You will say you do not identify with such extreme rhetoric. You are different. You are better than him. However, he ran on the platform that he believed in, and you voted for him. Once again, I challenge the people of that small community who voted in a white supremacist to not simply look at this as a one off, an anomaly, but in fact, a permeation of Republican politics as it is today. Ms. Rodriguez, thoughts? <laughs> well, America is gonna America, that's for yeah. sure. Um, you know, uh, I was listening to the reporting and I heard uh, when they were speaking about some of the people that were fighting against this, that they were Democrats. And I really wish people would stop aligning uh, political parties with human ideology, because as you said, these Republican women are leading the charge against mm -hmm. it. And to the idea that being a de Democrat is synonymous with being non-racist or anti-racist is just a farce because we experience racism from the people who believe that they are superior to us based solely on the color of their skin. <laughs> But I just think that, you know, I've been reading a lot about this bit, studying uh, Dr. Uh, Mo Tony Morrison and just really reading about the idea of racism and how we frame it as if we are the only victims of it, um, as the people of color, the victims of, of it, of the, you know, the acts of people who are white supremacists. But if you buy it in any day on any day, believe that white people who walk around about the earth who are struggling, ain't got no health care don't have an education, don't have real estate, are living horrible lives, walking around thinking that they're better than us cheerily because of this color of their skin. If you don't think that they are also victims of this ideology, <laughs> you are just as sick as they are <laughs> because yeah. that is the greatest hustle of all time is to tell these people who ain't got nothing, at least, at least, you are more susceptible to skin cancer. <laughs> and you know that what? You better. That's right. And sister, there's a great historical dynamic connected to what you just said. And one of the one of the greatest cons of all was when rich white people made other white people believe that there was something uniquely special about white skin and nothing else. That did it. It started the conversation of whiteness in America for sure.